going back to like more metal, uh, definitely Tool is on the top. Top oh, yeah. is Tool. I, I can't. I can never decide if I like a perfect circle more than Tool. I just like anything Vader does, I guess. How about Prong? Snap Who? your finger, snap your neck. Prong? Prong? I don't. I think you're just educating me on that. I thought you were going to say like Primus. So I was like, yeah, I like Primus. Oh, yeah, I saw Primus by accident. That was the first Lollapalooza tour. I oh, saw Primus, not on purpose, but they gosh. were there. You're like, what the fuck is this? Sailing the seas of cheese. I love their stuff. Yeah. I like Primus. I like Lean. I like They Might Be Giants. They I Might like Be Giants. Bo. I love They Might Be Giants. Yeah, I was seeing them the other I'm day. I'm losing my metalhead credit here, but fuck you. I, my, first <laughs> out, my first concert I ever saw was Iron Maiden. My second concert I ever saw was uh, uh, Barry Manilow. Oh Loved my gosh. them both, so fuck off. You have as much like variety as I do, and that's great. I think to be a poser would be to like limit yourself or pigeonhole yourself. For no good reason. Yeah. For, for anyone else's, like, ben, I'm like, I don't care what... If people don't like that I like certain music, I'm, I'll listen to Barry Manilow. I love me some Copacabana, um, show tunes, and, um, you know, you can appreciate, you have an ear for good music. You can appreciate it all. So they might be giant. I couldn't possibly pick a favorite, but I know the one that instantly leaps to mind the moment somebody starts to say they might be giants. Uh -huh. New Canary. Yeah, that's the song I'm I was your listening only friend, to. But I'm not your only friend. <laughs> I'm a little glowing friend. You sound like him really, too. I'm not actually your friend, but I am. The lip, there's poetry in that it shit. Is. The whole thing about the picture of Jason and the Argonauts. Mm -hmm. I know he gets. It, 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 there's a lot of deep cuts. All of um, their music, specifically, like the lyrics, are on a whole other level. Oh, they of, are so good. Like almost on a Dr. Seuss kind of. Yes, thing. they're Dr. Seuss music. Who oh, watches over you? you. Put a little birdhouse in your soul, not, not to, to put too fine a point on it. Say I'm, I'm the only me in your body. Pick a little birdhouse in your soul. And while yeah. you're at it, leave the nightlight on inside the birdhouse in your soul. I love it. You have a really great voice, by well, the way. You. I do like. I never have heard your singing voice till yesterday when you sent me um, just a, a sweet little like practice oh, video. Oh yeah, they're, they're warm up. And I was like, dang, Ted can sing and like play the shit out of his guitar I don't all you know what I mainly know about you is your your villain persona yeah, ropes and fingernails yeah yeah finger yes that's by the way like the most um physical contact you and I have had was yeah. that that ABN booth um, a that year was or two 2020 ago. before everything happened in 2020 it was a crazy yeah on the floor of the convention I finally bumped into you uh, my master videoed you scratching along yeah, my chest and my breasts and so cool. you could see the marks already raising um yeah, that the was look so on your face, like your eyes got really big. You're like, what is that? I know it's so. It was such an orgasmic experience. I'm pretty sure I said that in the video too. Um, we, we may recreate some of that today. We should. Yeah, we should. let's do it again. That would be on my list of diva demands or requests. Uh, the werewolf fingers yeah. is how I felt about it. Um, yeah, I definitely I get my best work when it's a collaboration. Like I'm paying for it today, but I want you yeah. to be completely involved in creative product because it's, that's when you do your best stuff. Yeah. So. Now, am I correct to assume that you, do you consider yourself as a lifestyler? Oh, yeah. Same, and that's why I figured we're going to hit it off because this is like what we eat, breathe, and sleep even when the camera's off. I found the adult entertainment world about three months before I found the BDSM lifestyle world. Yeah. Uh, and I've been deeply enmeshed in both ever since. When did you, uh, when did that journey begin you're for really, you? Really yeah, what that. decade? Uh, Tim Woodman sprang into being in April of 1996. It's a good year. I bet it was a good year for that, too. It's... Uh, it was. Like, the videos I'm doing... Anytime you join the community, you don't know the backstory yet. So all yeah. that drama and shit, you don't see that. You you're... just see the sparkly leather spanking that... stuff. It's Disneyland. Yeah, yeah, you're like, this is great and nothing will ever go wrong. We've yeah. all got it figured out. <laughs> and then you start hearing mumblings about this guy and that girl and all the drama. But... Yes. So, yeah. And within the videos I'm find your own like family like your own Absolutely. fetish family within the larger um like world of that and i always felt like ours have over there's been some overlap so i am really excited for us to take this next step i have to it's gonna be a lot of fun it is um i'm so uh did otherwise known as um oh i'm sorry not did i meant to say cnc consensual non-consent for some reason, I was thinking of dissociative identity disorder. <laughs> That's my favorite fetish. Yeah, just kidding. Consensual non-consent is my number one favorite thing to play with in my private life. Um, I'd love to do it more in my professional life, but there's just, you've kind of 
got the niche, you know. You have to be willing to not make money. Who has? But yeah, so. Oh, well, I'm happy that you stuck with it because some someone's got to do it. The, the consensual non-consent. There is an audience for it. There is, and the hypocrisy that you get to do that, like people don't watch Game of Thrones necessarily just for the political intrigue. Just for the wig budget? No, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> For the <laughs> and okay, yes, the plot and all of the whatever else and whatever it's at Sons of Anarchy or whatever else, those are all the same thing. Clan warfare with your choice of motorcycles or broadswords. And with the spectacle. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the plot and the intrigue is there, but when the characters die, that's part of why you're watching them. It's yeah, it's for like that gore visceral gore. thrill. Whether it's the good guys you get to be sad about it or the bad guys that finally get theirs. And they get fucked up. That's part of what turns was... you on, whether sexually or not, it turns you on. And all of those rape scenes yeah. they get away with because it's not graphic. Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> we're being honest and therefore not getting it. It's a performance. We're, we're still watching it with your dick in your hand. Punished, though, for being forthcoming yeah. about it. Like, like the American Society is like, the FCC or whatever saying, like, don't you dare, like, be upfront about, right. or, like, transparent about what you do. They want you to be, focus on the, the violence. That's not going to harm anyone to yeah. you. It's hard enough to make porn with all the restrictions, but then to make violent and or fantasy not consent porn. Yeah. You're a niche within a niche, and it's tricky. And I'm yeah. never going to get rich doing it, but I have satisfaction. I, it's I a, love my heart. Yes, it's something that you enjoy doing. It doesn't just totally feel like the monotony, or like, yeah. you just get through it and get a paycheck. We have fun with these fantasies, and there's no, no reason you can't. I mean, it's a very human, let's be honest, it's like, it's within all of us. Some of, with great power comes great responsibility, so I'm happy if the people that are making this art come to life are people like you and I who can handle that. Mm -hmm. You know, we understand some people can't separate fantasy from reality, but we can, and we can go about it in the most, like, ethical way, and sensual way, and, and sensual. And that's crucial. And you're, would you not agree that the fetish and great fantasy fans in particular are among the sweetest, nicest most caring. I want to be sure that you are okay with yeah. what we shot. You and couldn't I'm so find a better to person to be. And it's not that those don't <laughs> exist everywhere, but honestly, proportionately, there's a lot more jackasses in mainstream yeah. porn fandom. Yeah, I say that about normies in general. Whether it's like a mainstream, like we're talking about an industry or just society. Um, and actually, I wonder if your ears were burning because on the way here, I was explaining to my master. I'm like. Yeah, you remember Tim. He's a he's a dear. He's a friend. I'm like, it's that age old tale of like, the you know they're casting like the sweetest gentleman in the role of the villain, and that's always that's well, just how it goes. You don't want a real jerk doing that job. No. You want a nice person doing that job. It's acting too. That's the whole point, you guys. Like this, anything we're gonna do on camera today, it's acting. We're not actually um, advocating rape or advocating like a, like violence against women or anyone. Not insane. And that's why you need to be a good actor. Are you a theater nerd from childhood? Yes. Just yesterday, somebody, oh fuck, who was it? Was you it? replied to my reply. That's cause, right. Yeah, because uh, I said, theater nerds. Yeah, it was um, Denali was saying, was asking, yeah. like, okay, yeah. fetish, like the fetish performer um, pipeline. Yeah. Or rather, reverse that. It was like uh, you all start out as like drama nerds and then you yeah. get down the pipeline, you end up a fetish performer. Yeah. Or you were um, in ballet or both. Yeah. Every bondage model I know was in ballet, which is. Like ballet or gymnastics, it all it all helps. Like, um, yeah. So I was saying my favorite role I ever, you know, because I did a little bit of stage crew, but mostly I'm on. I want to be on stage. I want to be yeah. like in the in the spotlight. So that's what Denali prompted, and everyone responded. And I said um, Eponine and Les Misérables was my you like, got favorite. You to play Eponine. Yeah, that's I was cast awesome. as Eponine. Was, I got all the parts I wanted. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I have so I cool. have a really good um, resume for like community. You know, like crappy high school theater at least um most of high in fact every high school production i was in i was just the extra changes costume 15 times and it's in every yeah. musical number because i knew i could sing yeah i mean uh, i never got a lead role in high school but in high school summer theater mm -hmm. yeah that was my pride in my senior year i got to play nathan detroit and guys and dolls in the evening while playing scarecrow in the afternoons for the same company wow that's such ver look at that versatility we like love to see it so yes i've actually sung if i only had a brain you, straw on my face. I want to see you as scare. I have such a crush on Scarecrow from uh, Wizard of Oz. You'd make a wonderful Scarecrow. I thought so. I did. I was lanky and flopped over an awful lot. It was, it Maybe was we'll do a Scarecrow fantasy video one of these days. That'd be costume. We'd be, we'd be doing that right now. Awesome.
I'll let you borrow my striped fucking Halloween shirt <laughs> for it. Um, and I like Nathan Detroit because he's a bit of a scoundrel. He is, right? yeah. He's a great part to play. Guys and Dolls is a classic. I think oh, every great stuff. We just watched it again at that level. Every high school has their their day <laughs> doing that play. Um, yeah, I've always loved performing. I've always loved like pushing the envelope too. So um, working in the fetish part of the adult industry, it just always made sense. Yeah. I think it was always meant. It was always going to happen for me, um, and I pursued it pretty early on. I've been I've been at this for a nice while. It's only recently that I've done any kind of mainstream and or like boy girl. Um, I like my gay porn. I like my weird fetishy. Yeah. Like more privately run studios. I feel like the closest I've come to mainstream porn is I had a customer for a while that hired me for like, wow, like 10 different times this guy hired me. Uh, uh, for like blackmail. Yeah. No rope. He was like, would you be willing to do a thing without any rope in it? I'm like, nobody's nobody's ever asked me that. Yeah, you're like, I can do I rope. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like, and he just rope? likes the, you know, the older man in power and the snotty young heiress blackmail for a fortune or whatever. Right. <laughs> I'm like, well, I, I guess, sure, and I did, and that was still fun, because it's still storytelling and performance. Yeah, you're like, I can take on any role, <laughs> like, don't that worry about that. It just hadn't occurred to me, I'm like, well, who would hire me for mainstream porn, what are you talking about? Yeah, I, that was the one, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that was, uh, I mean, that's still pretty taboo, though. Oh, yeah. The the subject matter, I mean, but blackmail's so hot, too. Oh, yeah. I love that shit. Oh, yeah. I'm always like, I wish I was blackmailed and real. No, I don't. No, no, I don't. Let's just stick to... Let's do that where we can enjoy it safely. And where we can, like, call it off at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. But it is something very horny. 